Hello, I'm Jack Jackson. <laughs> Jack Jackson here, on the campaign trail. To you, the American people, I bring you many campaign promises. If you elect me, your old-timey president, I will raise all of your taxes. That will benefit the society in ways that I can't tell you about right now because you're very angry at me for saying I'm raising the taxes. But trust me on this one, it's a good thing. I will also lower the rates of taxes after I have raised them. To pacify you, of course. And everybody likes pacifiers because you, the American people, are babies. That's right, I said babies. Now, because you're babies, you will get the best prenatal health care in all of America, which is not very good. But I promise you, if I raise the taxes, the prenatal health care will improve because of the government medical assistance. That's right. I will raise the taxes. I will then lower the taxes. Everybody is happy. On the back of this train, I can see only a narrow swath of the American people, but I can tell you're a hearty people. And if you vote for me, Jack Jackson, I will promise to make you even more hearty. Now... I, since I am on the back of a train, I am slowly moving away from you all, so I'm going to increase the volume of my voice and tell you all to vote for me, Jack Jackson, this coming election. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Welcome, oh welcome to Space City Chronicles. We got a show for you today. I don't know what'll happen, but I'm sure it'll be something that happens in a show. <laughs> That's all I got. That was great, man. I would like to thank Sibo for writing uh, the theme song to the show, which he will have to perform next week as well. And let's hope he remembers what he did, because uh, it was pretty good. Anyway, welcome to Space City Chronicles. This is episode eight. We've been doing this for eight weeks, and no one has thought to stop us, which is great. Uh, I thought to stop you, but then I thought better of it. Yeah, well. That, that's actually why we're here, from the FCC. So oh, dear. Sorry. Sorry. We've got members of the FCC, Chris and Ben. <laughs> that is the... Freaking cool <laughs> comics coalition. I like the way you tied oh, that in. That was really uh, nice. That oh, was yeah. really nice. Oh, yeah. I even that extra C. Uh, no. It's a silent C in the, in the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a traditional silent C that we have in English. Um, anyway, t so today we're going to be talking comic books. I know everyone's like crazy about comic books these days. Comic books, graphic novels, writing comics, making comics, because they're different, I guess. Uh, reading comics. <laughs> Uh, if you want to call in, it's 713-807-1794. We've got two local Houston comic book artists. This is crazy. We've never had a lo this is This is awesome. I didn't think there was a, a local comic scene, but apparently it's a pretty big one. Uh, it's bigger than I thought it was anyway. <laughs> uh, we got Chris. Uh, uh, sorry, Chris Engelsma. I'm a professional. <laughs> and, and how do you spell your name? <laughs> It's, it's how we screen telemarketers. It's an ancient Ukrainian secret, but my last name is Humanek. Humanek. Yeah. Ben Humanek and Chris Engelsma, um, they were gracious enough to come on and talk to us today about their comics, comics in general, crap like that. If you have opinions or you want to ask them questions, feel free to call in 713-807-1794. Last week we had four calls. We want to try and double that. <laughs> For the eighth episode. The eighth episode. Yeah, we want eight, eight on eight. Eight episodes. Eight on eight. And already I can tell this is going to be a great episode because we've got natural patter. We've got throw pillows that I'm going to use for my back. <laughs> uh, I think this episode is going to suck. What? It's going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, sibo has got a bad attitude. Once the pillows come out, it's all bets are. But with those sunglasses, he's also got a bad attitude. Yeah, I, I wear my sunglasses. See, yeah, I like to stay studio. positive. I don't like to wear sunglasses on TV. Anyway, 
because we've got them here and because they're so gracious with them, guys, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I guess my, my first question is, what got you, why, why do you do comics here? Why not do them some other hotbed of comic bookdom, which I guess would be like Michigan? Michigan, uh, at, at the bottom of Lake Michigan, there's actually a secret comic book bunker where people... A bunker? A bunker, yeah. Well, because they For have, bumpkins. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. So. It's where the silent sea comes from is Michigan, mm. actually. They've got a whole different English there. But that's where they make their comics in this, like, undersea place. And it's just made of Bristol board, and it's taped together, and, it, mm. you know, temporary structure. See, you won't hear that on any other show. Like, we're the only ones with the guts to reveal the location of a secret comics bunker at the bottom of Lake Michigan. And we can't tell you the exact location, but... Anyway, but seriously, like, uh, what what got you in? What what got you started? I, I guess we you, you can both answer this in succession. Like, what got you guys started in making your own? I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, everyone I think goes through a comic book reading phase. But what yeah. what was the the jumping off point where you said, you know what, I want to make one? So it just kind of happened naturally. I'm talking about it like I got into drugs or something, but, you know, I just started with one thing, and then, you know, next thing you know, I'm just passed out on the floor, covered in India ink, and it's, uh, I don't know, I think the thing is, like, nobody stopped us from doing it. That's the whole point. Yeah. So, like, um, I mean, I don't know about Ben, but, like, yeah. I started drawing, I mean, we all draw as little kids, right? We're always sketching, doodling, and then life just kind of gets in the way, right? So, um, I think somewhere along the line, you need to find out how you know how much you need to tap into that creative um, person inside you and then just make comics for some people it's you know um doing guitar music yeah so yeah i mean i actually do comics too and i've drawn all my life there you go there you go and you didn't think to bring any with you well i didn't bring any of my own but i brought you brought brian two comic related brian the last man <laughs> and why the last man which i'm reading the second volume right now okay and uh, oh, i brought vince the other part of the band a frolic gave me this as a random present it's an x-men and star trek ne the next generation crossover now, that which i have not read yet is it but like a novelization or is it a, a novelization of something that never occurred on tv it's like an original story they had yes. this period in the 90s where they were all about mashing up the x-men and star trek because marvel had like a paramount comics license so you can totally find this like mark silvestri drawn issue of x-men uh, Star Trek, where like they get on the Enterprise and Wolverine like nerve pinches uh, uh, Spock, like Wolf, he pinches Wolverine and makes him pass out. It's like it's awesome. That sounds like the greatest thing. Oh, yeah. that I never knew about. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine Riker having like a beard off with Wolverine, for example, <laughs> or Xavier meeting Picard and realizing they're the same guy? Yeah. Like oh. possibilities are endless. I couldn't, but if you could, call in at seven one three seven nine four. And give us the give us the most juicy detail account of that meeting that you can probably come up with. All right. Um, so you were saying like it's just something you just sort of fell into. Yeah. Like any habit, like all habits are kind of the same. Like drug <laughs> habits or like all drug habits. Yeah. You know. And but it's something you you, you start to <laughs> fall into. Yeah. Well, you think about Victorian times. People were if if like you had means, you were trained up to like pursue leisure stuff. So yeah. you could play instruments or read novels or draw. I mean, it's a skill anyone can really acquire. It just, I think like Chris said, it, it takes some encouragement. Like no one ever discouraged us when we were kids from drawing stuff we wanted to draw. So it just became natural to keep doing it until we became confident enough to show it to other people. The internet too has been a huge yeah. booster. Uh, the whole industry is kind of moving towards web comics. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but there'll always be a place in print for, for comics. Yeah, and one of the things, um, I, I re started reading web comics a lot in high school. One of the things I noticed is that even though the entire back catalog would be available online for free, mm -hmm. artists could still put out print editions of their work, and it would still sell pretty well enough to sustain people. Yeah. And people mm -hmm. started to realize that you know you won't you wouldn't necessarily make a killing, but you could you could sustain yourself yeah. through selling your own product, even though you had it up online. And I think my favorite artist webcomic of all time, I don't know if you guys share this, is uh, Chris Onstadt of Akewood. Oh. You read Akewood. That is a myriad comic to get into with all the like blogs yeah. and stuff around it. I, I've only scratched the surface of Akewood. Yeah, but. it's it's Akewood for those of you who don't know, it's 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 impossible to sum up, but it's a web comic that started in early two thousands and it centers around uh, a group of stuffed animals and cats. But it's this huge wor detailed world. And he puts out and he puts out blogs from the character viewpoints and like they're insanely well written. Um, and he's also put out a bunch of printed collections of, of arcs that he's written but he adds a little 
he had some filler material in, so it actually makes you not feel too guilty about buying it. Uh, yeah. Um, what was I gonna ask Nest? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I mean, you guys, you guys, what, what do you guys focus on? Like, what's your main focus? Are you guys more focused toward the web with auxiliary printing, or do you guys put your stuff out and print first? Uh, I definitely start off in, on the web, okay. so uh, because it's it's free for the most part. Yeah. So uh, you can just uh, publish your stuff on a place like Tumblr or mm -hmm. um, any sort of microblogging website. A lot of people just go through Twitter, and uh, there's a lot of ways that you can get your stuff out to a large audience for relatively no cost. I think that's the big appeal to it, yeah. is uh, a lot of times, I mean, the cost of printing a lot of comic books can, can get pricey, and so, you know, you need to kind of develop your skills and get immediate feedback before that, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I think with webcomics, too, like, you don't, you're not as limited in terms of space. Like, there's the whole idea of the infinite canvas, mm -hmm. infinite canvas comics, which are comics that just extend infinitely into the browser. Yeah, like, like Scott McCloud had, had a whole bunch of... Uh, ideas of how the future web comics would develop into this. We're trying to entertain panel. people, not bore them. So no right. Scott McCloud. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh man. That's that's the. That'll I'm be harsh on Scott McCloud because he's <laughs> boring. <laughs> you know, I will say this. I uh, I went into college in 2004, and yeah. I had drawn comics for fun, and I was like, this can't be a serious pursuit. I, I wish it would be for me. It's not. Uh, and at Baylor University's library, they had a copy of uh, Understanding Comics, which is Scott McCloud's book about is comics theory. It's um, opus, magnum opus. Yeah. It's the, the standard work for comics appreciation. Absolutely. It, it totally fired my imagination to see, like, here's a serious work written by a grown-up that says, you know what, this art form has rules, and these rules can be used to create really awesome stuff. So yeah. as, as dry as he can be, he, he definitely laid some good groundwork. Maybe, you know, we can't name a lot of mathematicians we love off the top of our head, but... I can. You know, Newton. Well, there you go. Sebo, mathematicians, go. Pascal, Descartes, uh, pretty much any philosopher. Basically, yeah. Times. I mean, if you were a philosopher in the in the 1600s, you it's were really also funny, actually. Uh, what, what? It's funny how many like philosophers there was like a cross between different, I guess like disciplines of yeah. science and pseudoscience. Yeah, no, that's true. All of them were artists and everything too. Yeah. A lot of mathematicians of the past were musicians and <clears throat> painters and so on. Oh, that's a great point. I use math as an example because my wife is a mathematician, so. She's uh, much more impressive in that respect. I'm like, you can think logically. Like, strategy's good. That's awesome. Well, strategy is important when you write a comic. I mean, a comic book or like a strip, like the fl way frames flow into one another mm -hmm. is really important. Sure. I mean, uh, well, and sometimes you plan that out. And sometimes there's that serendipitous moment where it just kind of happens. You're like, what if this goes next? Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, Chris and I have actually worked on some collaborative strips where that's kind of the operating rule. Yeah, yeah, and before we get too deep into the theory, because this is ostensibly a comedy program, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I could talk about this all day, but I don't think anyone else would care. Uh, but if you do care, call 713-807-1794. Uh, leave your opinions. Um, you're talking about collaborations. Uh, that really is mine. We should probably go into some specific things that you've done. And I've got, I met you guys at Menil Fest a couple months ago, and you guys were kind enough to give me two examples of your work free of charge, so that let that be a, uh, a lesson. If you want free stuff, tell the people you have a TV show, and they'll just give it to you, <laughs> and you never have to call them back, and they will call you. <laughs> anyway, it's called it's called working for exposure. That's our payment. We yeah, like publicity. Yeah. We're helping each other out. Um, but <laughs> I got this is Chris's one of like you you've done you've got on your website you've got two major series going right now right yeah i have two serial stories coming yeah jesus out. christ manatee and then the other one is um the oh i'm sorry oh uh, did you want to say it or should i jump in could you could you okay <laughs> Ang it's called angus and darling angus and darling yeah and angus and they're, they're both kind of interesting because like one of them jesus christ manatee you re like reimagine jesus as a manatee yep that's the entire premise so right. i always no more complicated that. than that yep. <laughs> uh, and the other is, is I actually read a, uh, a little bit of the of Angus, and I'm going to keep messing that up. Uh, but I read a little bit. It's, it's about a penguin that wants to be human or something. Basically, yeah. It's, it's sort of an existential story of a penguin who wants to be yeah. more than what he's supposed to be. I don't have a copy of either of those. I have the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Fly by the seat of our pants here. But, yeah. no, this is really good. It's a short story. Um, it's nice. Do you... Do you I mean, obviously, writing a short story and writing a novel, or like writing a, a long serialized work, are like two very different things, and it, like, it's probably two different writing processes. But do you find which do you find more like do you find one more enjoyable than the other, or do you find like your like depending on your headspace, like one is easier 
at a certain time than the other. I think that essentially there are two very different approaches to things because when you when you approach something to make it as a comic, um, there's a lot more factors that go involved because now you have got the whole visual aspect of it, right? So I try to I try to plan most of my stories out. Uh, down on on paper, I, mm -hmm. I write it out at least in some sort of form. Whether it's just words, or fragmented words, not necessarily meaning much. But um, when I go to actually make the comic, you know, you have to think about layouts and compositions and all that, all that stuff. So um, yeah, I, I think I think ostensibly they're very different approaches, very equally hard. Yeah, yeah, very difficult. Yeah. Do you do you spend do you find that you spend more time focusing? Like, do you do you have periods where you just like only want to do serialized, and or periods where you only want to do short story, or does you is it do you find they work kind of side by side? Um, I think that uh, I definitely enjoy doing serial comics more because I like that character development side. So, oh, uh, sorry to interrupt, gentlemen, but I do believe we have a phone call coming. All right, in. caller, are you there? Hello, caller. Caller, yes, speak up. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Who is this, please? Okay, this is John from Nashville. I've got a question. Uh, interested, been a big fan of Peanuts, uh, Dinsbury, Calvin and Hobbes, kind of the commercial side. Oh, hell here's yeah. Question. Calvin and Hobbes for life, dude. <laughs> well, yeah. here's the question. Uh, did any of those guys particularly inspire you, and what's your perspective on the commercial aspects of this versus the uh, just kind of the pure creative side? All right. Uh... Ben, do you want to take that away? Well, I, I'm very grateful to hear from John. John is uh, near and dear to my heart. I consider him a mentor, and he's also my wife's father. So thanks for calling. Um, I, we've talked about this a little bit. Uh, Calvin and Hobbes is really famous for the fact that Bill Watterson never licensed his creations um, to make money off of out of toys or TV shows or anything. He just did the comic. And I think it, to answer that question, A, it's really inspiring because there's a pure vision there. Like, he just put his time into making that comic, and that's it. Did it for 10 years, walked away when he was ready to be done, and it, it just stays consistent. There was no distraction, like, keeping it from its main point. So I think that's kind of the career you'd want to aspire to, or, or maybe myself I'd want to aspire to. That said, Charles Schultz licensed his creations. They made him buku bucks, and he still did great comics for 50 years. So you can have it both ways sometimes. I'm definitely a bigger fan of Bill Watterson's work. Just It was, it was more... Uh, it was more genuine to me. Um, I just never really got into the whole peanuts thing. Um, so no dark. real reason. Though. <laughs> I love so. I love peanuts <laughs> because peanuts is one of the darkest and most depressing comics you can read about children, um. and it's so like the like the way if you read the the ones um, from the early '40s and you really like think about the psychology of what's going on, it's so messed up. Like there's so much abuse, emotional abuse that gets hurled at Charlie Brown. Anyway, um, caller, uh, John, John, I'm also John. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah did I you, sure am. Um, do you have any other questions? Yeah, one other question, and this is just any aspect of how sometimes this stuff kind of ventures into the political realm. Okay. Um, do you, uh, just your perspectives on that, the use of this media for, uh, you know, for that tool, obviously being used that way, but uh, does that have any interest to... Uh, to either of your guests, I don't know. Is it? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. If if it's a topic or ideal that I can really get behind, I think so. Um, yeah. yeah what I started off doing editorial cartoons for our campus paper at Baylor, and uh, a lot of times that slant was decided by our editorial board. Uh, it wasn't necessarily my politics coming into play, mm. but. I will say it's kind of interesting. A lot of cartoonists uh, and comics in general tend toward a moderate to liberal side. There's not a lot of a conservative voice in comics, and uh, we can debate the merits of that, but I think to have a more robust medium, that's something that could be developed in the future. So I'd be interested to see if there were some good conservative comics coming out, uh, even though my stance is a little more toward the moderate side. Okay. I think the, uh, I think the larger question is, have you ever felt the need to... Uh, talk about something specific through your comic, an issue that you felt was important to you that you needed to get the word out. Did you ever feel like there was something like that that you needed to communicate through your work? Um, I mean, I, th I think we sprinkle a bit of ourselves into everything that we put out, you know. Um, it's not necessarily has to be a very blatant picture of an elephant sitting on a donkey, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. But, I mean, uh, I, th I think you there's a definite character in everything that we everything that we do if, you know yeah. if you if you dig deep enough so. i think one thing i'm trying to be conscientious about is that my characters aren't all white um yeah. even though that's my worldview and my perspective 
uh, it's not necessarily the world at large. And so I want to try to create a body of work that's got multiple perspectives and skin colors involved. Uh, yeah, that's not so much of a political thing. Maybe it's more of a kind of sociological thing. It's more political thing. than I think you think. I think especially, um, well, we'll get to this. Uh, Caller, are you still there? I sure am. All right. Well, uh, we got to move on, but I want to thank you so much for calling in. Uh, thank Appreciate you so much for much. watching. Enjoy and it. enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, John. Yeah. All right. But I, I want to get back to that point because sure. you, you brought up something really important, and this is something that happens a lot, uh, comes up a lot in mainstream comics, where they, where uh, a company will want to reimagine a character that's always been white. I think the famous example, Peter Parker, mm -hmm. Spider-Man, he was wanted to be redrawn. They wanted to do. There was a joke that um, Donald, Donald Glover. Glover was going to play him in a movie. Correct. And then the whole community just went insane because you can't have a black character there's always been a white character and it's right. like why not it's a fictional character sure yeah. it doesn't it's, there's not real history it's not like you're, you're taking a character from from history and then changing him entirely um but it, it is a huge political statement to not go to to not have a, a character that is a white male and actually that brings me to this little this little comic uh, there's no zoom anywhere is there? <laughs> uh, it's called this when you have a reunion and it's it's a really great story it's about um uh, i'll let you talk about it a little bit <laughs> it, it's a short one it's about a father and a daughter uh and uh you kind of get the sense that something is happening where time is running out for them maybe for the world at large you, you don't really know but um this daughter comes back to the dad's house and you get the sense that there's bad blood between them they've not been talking to each other for years and all of a sudden they've got to make things right before you know, things end. So um, it's just a short six page story and kind of almost a prayer from myself that my relationship with my daughter, she's only nine months, she's really young, but that it would never be in a place where, uh, where we wouldn't be able to talk or communicate, that we'd always have closeness and, yeah. and, uh, and tightness. Uh, we have another phone call. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Yeah, we can hear you, Caller. Go ahead. Uh, I was on a note that you were talking about how comics are being more progressive and how the people flipped out a couple of years about go about making Peter Parker black. Yeah. Well, recently they cast uh, Johnny Storm from the Fantastic uh, Four as a black character now. Yeah, Michael Michael B. Jordan from Fruitvale Station. He's a really talented actor. He's yes, really good. Uh, and also I believe uh, I can't remember exactly which character in DC, but they reca uh, recently in comics that made him well, came out of day and got married. Uh, Wally West was a white Flash who became, he's a black character now in the new universe. Uh, uh, are you talking about the, the Green Arrow on Earth 2? Yeah, that's the one, the or is Green it Arrow. The Green Lantern maybe on Earth 2? Yeah. Green Lantern. Okay. Green Lantern on Earth there you go. 1, I think. Yeah. Could you turn your TV down, caller? Um, on the computer, I'll scroll back. <laughs> <laughs> turn, the, turn the volume down. We can hear you on the screen. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's got a friend. Turns it up and then we hear ourselves. All right. And do the show like that. Okay. So, Carl, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but it was a technical thing. Anything else you wanted to bring up? Uh, just that also how recently in years you'll see more pushing graphic novels from more franchise uh, series like Halo and things like that. So you're seeing a more pushing comics in, in recent years. Is, mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. opposed to in the 90s when you didn't really see him as much. Yeah, that's a good point. Chris is actually doing a, a Halo graphic novel of his own, but it's, oh, with, really? it's with penguins. So, yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's You're how you scroll the whole <laughs> trademark issue. Master Beak, I'd love to see that. I don't know. Yeah, you, sh you can do that now. Well, well give that. Well, you, 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 you give me why well, creative actually license. Create, to yeah, do. actually, okay. anything on this show that comes up on the show belongs to us. So, okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> well, new ideas. Anyway, caller, uh, we got to move on, but thank you so much for calling in. All right, thank you. All right, call again whenever you want. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, we don't have a lot. We uh, we need to move on to another crazy. What? That was hanging up, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, because I wanted to make this show um, something that could be interesting for everybody and not just comic book nerds like myself, we do have an activity plan. There's one more thing I want to ask about. Uh, and that's you guys are doing a collaborative project with hundreds of people online called uh, Barkira. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. And uh, I looked at it and I saw a bunch of Simpsons characters 
warmling around in the wastelands of what looks to be like a Neo Tokyo kind of thing, and I'm thinking this is Akira. Yep. Is that, is that more or less what this is? That's right. It's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay. So if you just picture Akira with all the Simpsons characters superimposed in there, that's exactly what Bark Hero is. That sounds like it's exactly the kind of thing that our audience would appreciate. And if it is, call in 713-807-1794. <laughs> all right, that joke's getting less and less. Well, there's, there's also a I website uh, set up for Bark Kira. Oh, yes, let's get that out. It's, it's just BarkKira.com, but uh, you can read the whole first volume of Akira or Akira with Simpsons characters. And... Uh, Oh, so they're, they're literally redoing the whole graphic novel they, with Simpsons characters? All six volumes. Yeah, all six How volumes. is that legal? So the thing is you're not allowed to make any money off of it. So we're uh, not doing this for, for sale. We're not doing okay. it. We're basically doing it just to honor uh, the Akira series okay. as well as Mac Runnings. So. Do you want to tell them how it got started and kind of what got the ball rolling? So, um, well, I don't know all the details about that. Okay. But um, I know that um, started off with a uh, person. Um, do you remember who originally wrote the first? Uh... I, I don't. There was a guy who, basically there was a guy named James Harvey who kind of spearheaded it. His friend did like a fun Bart Kira comic, and he was like, what if we did the whole thing? So, yeah. And then he reached out to people on, on various um, social media websites, mostly Tumblr, to just say... Already got the logo up there. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's nice. nice. The, heads on that crap. Mostly just to say, uh, hey, we're doing this. We'll see how many people we can get. Uh, no big deal if it, doesn't, if it doesn't really work out. And it just ballooned into this hundreds and hundreds of artists from across the world who wanted to be a part of this and they everyone got you know four or five pages and basically got to reimagine the entire the, the, the entire series so it was, it was really incredible so awesome. to see that collaboration well if you always thought that Akira wasn't powerful enough in its current form and needed to be redone with uh, Simpsons characters they checked it out but uh, I am being advised this time we'd start drawing shit so BAM <laughs> oh there goes the Tiki Tiki man is gone hey, FCC you want to say anything about that what just happened just now yeah that yeah. was an awesome kick right <laughs> <laughs> so today because no one cares about comic books as much as we do and we have decided we're going to create comic book characters of our own now if I had thought about this I would have made more workspace <laughs> but I did not. Well, we have this little uh, museum table here. And because we are an independent operation, as these two gentlemen are, we do not have we do not have powerful we do not have awesome comic book stuff. All we've got is uh, Crayola <laughs> markers that I bought at Kroger. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, we, since we got two professionals, I'm gonna give them a palette of ten colors. All right. Okay. And if anyone wants to call in. Anyone who knows me or knows Ryan or knows Oh man. Sibo. Hey. Call in. 713. Uh, I forgot the number. 713 <laughs> Nice. Give us some characteristics that you think. Are you gonna share the table? <laughs> yeah. Let's share the table. We can uh, How about how about I'll draw I'll, how about we crisscross when yeah. we draw? <laughs> okay, it's, uh, so uh, until we get some you, phone calls, we'll you just... hold my hand. Now, John, would you, would you want us to leave these here at the studio if someone wants to pick it up? Like, if they called in and they want to keep it? Or what, uh, what would you want us to do? Oh, it means we have to do a really good job. Yeah. Or we no, could... no, I was thinking we could keep them as, like, set pieces. Oh, oh that works. that's great. If you yeah. really, really want them, sign copies by two semi-professional artist <laughs> oh, call now we're semi-professional fine you're fully professional 713-807-1794 we I know where hear, the bunker is i want <laughs> here's what i want you to tell me i want you to give me a the best reason why you should get them and b pr a promise that you'll come pick them up and i won't have to drag them around in my car for weeks at a time i want assurances that you will actually take them up okay so we don't have any phone calls so i think like the best way to start what do you guys think like how do you guys start when you're making when you're first coming up with a character how do you guys like what's your process for when you first sit down to draw how someone what someone looks like well first of all you gotta think is my character a cantaloupe i mean right. are am i a and if the answer is if, no if the answer is no so my well, well I, I don't know. My first so what you're saying is your cantaloupes, <laughs> your, your comics are all cantaloupes. They're all based. they're all circles. So Basically. The first question to you, Ryan, then is: Are you a cantaloupe? Answer honestly. You're on TV. I you think look so. like a cantaloupe. Okay. okay. Ryan is a say. cantaloupe. So who's got Ryan? <laughs> We're already married, so we cantaloupe. No. no. Oh, oh. hello. That's perfect. I'm out of here. No. <laughs> okay, Chris We're done. The ball We're just call the it bar good. just got lower. Call it good. <laughs> We're like raised to dirt. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyway. so let's let's draw some peeps. So let's start sure. with let's start with the uh, is the character a cantaloupe? Is that the, that's the first? I think person? we'll say no. No. Okay. I'm gonna do a cantaloupe-less person. Unfortunately, no cantaloupes. Okay. 
All right, so let's start with that. Okay, are we drawing a man or woman? A she-man? A she-man. A she-man. A she not not She-Hulk, though. A cobbler. A cobbler. Yeah, what? We can't draw She-Hulk. Uh, what if you guys Actually, described some characteristics and Chris drew like a guy I and am, I drew a girl? Okay, let's, let's, okay, so let's someone who is loud, brash, and in your face, the right kind of marketable attitude. <laughs> Think Generation X, cir like Generation Extreme, circa 1998, maybe nice. a full frosted tip haircut. So maybe that places him in like 2001. Caller, you're on the air. Caller. Hey guys. Hello. Hey, dude. Who's this? Hey, this is Daniel. Daniel! Yo, Daniel, how's it going? How it be, dude? Good, man. Daniel, for you guys, Daniel's our friend out in Lubbock. He has a radio show that's pretty pretty sweet. Uh, okay. Daniel, I used I'm... to live in Lubbock. Oh. I went to school there. Oh. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, huh? Killing it today with the conversational sweet. banter. <laughs> Yo, Daniel, so what, what? you got some ideas of what we should draw? Uh yeah, my my go-to drawing uh, character thing is is frog people. Frog people, I, I like, like that. Frog people, I think frog that's... humans. Yeah, frog humans, like think... battle toads. Yeah. Mm. Oh exactly. my. Exactly, like battle toads. Yes. All right. Well, I want to point out that a toad is different from a frog. It's <laughs> a good point. Well, so what about okay. a frog toad? How about we do one Fair toad enough. person? We're we're drawing frog... war frogs. Not battle toads, war frogs. There we go. Yeah, there we go. They're less worried. Right, so more your sleep. starting point is always frog people. Now, why is that based on the movie Hell Comes to Frog Town or something like that? No, it's just Sorry. that's always Sorry. been my thing since no I was a kid. Is it fair <laughs> to say that you really like according? According? Yeah, froggy <laughs> went according. Is that your? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's probably it's probably Frog and Toad that that children's book that inspired it a long time ago. Okay, well we're gonna start off with some frog bases and they're gonna make them kind of look like people. Now there's some interesting yeah. creative uh, decisions is being me a, made we, over we on this. We have creative thing. license here, so absolutely. Actually, do as long as it's more or less roughly based on the suggestions. I'm gonna let you guys go. You guys are the artists here, not me. I'm just a <laughs> loudmouth who has a TV show. All right, Daniel, how's it been going with you, man? It's been good. Yo, this is a great show tonight, man. These these uh these guests are super uh impressive. They're cool guys. Yeah, they are Thank cool you guys. Kindly. We're impressive without even having to do anything. Yeah. Oh, hey, thanks, thanks guys. They it's keep the they keep being like, "Ah, oh, we're not that great." But they they'd agree to come on a, a TV show with some stranger who, you know. Right. It's a weird it's a cool thing to do. Yeah, no, I understand that. So you a big comic book right. reader, man? What's that? Are you a big comic book reader? I, um, uh, Mine's looking like a lobby uh, boy. <laughs> I like yours. I, I'm not like a DC Marvel guy. But oh, me neither. I, I, yeah, but I, I read some stuff. What kind of what kind of stuff are you into? What do you like to read? Um, Daniel Close. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah Daniel. Close. Hell yeah. That's kind of my favorite. Like David Boring's kind of my favorite thing ever. It's so good and creepy. Yeah. Daniel Close is the best. Do you know Daniel Close, Ryan? No. Okay. Uh, you know that movie Ghost World? No. Oh my God, Ryan, <laughs> you're killing me here. So, do you know your name? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't think about that one for like, a second. <laughs> like a Jim Woodring and like just that like weird, you know, psychedelic, esoteric type stuff. Yeah. I don't know. The Unifactor, <laughs> that kind of strange universe he works in. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Woodring's cool because he, uh, did you hear about the Kickstarter he did for that giant pin? No, I didn't see that. He literally has a fountain pen that he can use to draw with. It's about the size of a person, but he just got, <laughs> he, he like fundraised for it. And like he goes to public events and he draws with it and it's, it comes out really well. I mean, he's just incredible. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's really that's fun. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I had to say about, about the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, peanut thing. Yeah. Like, like it's probably the best representation of living with depression. Yes, ever. One hundred percent. I agree. As like someone, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, like as some. Yeah, I've been with depression for a long time, and <laughs> you know, it's, it's just perfect with it. It's it's it's, a, it's the most accurate description of it because it's like it's. No, it's, I yeah. It's just like a constant malaise is like the best you can hope for, like basic level functioning, 
Like, Charlie Brown's never, like, happy, but he's never, like, so deeply... He's just... There's just no hope in the entire... Exactly, it's, yeah. I, I don't know if I'd agree with that. I think, uh, I think there are moments where it looks like there's no hope, but there are some moments where he sprinks in, sprinkles in, like, some hope, some light, uh, you know, maybe... Charlie Brown never kicks the football in the 50-year run, but he does have, like, a meaningful connection with Linus. Uh, so I think I, – I don't think you can totally bring it all the way into negative territory. It's a great depiction of depression, no question. But I think there are hopeful moments in it okay. that, that buoy the narrative somewhat. Well, that's uh, – Right, depth. right. Yeah, there's – well, I mean, yeah. And depression isn't totally, completely, you know, sobbing the whole time. It's, no. That's a great point. It's a way of life. It's yeah. – uh, yeah. And, yeah, and he never kicked the football in 50 years. So. No, he did not. But it's worth noting that he always tried his best to kick the football every exactly. single time. Never gave up. That's right. In my opinion, exactly. I think his saving grace was when he got that rock, you know. Yeah, that was kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the best point in his career. Yeah. I, I will say this. Umberto Eco once said that Peanuts was his favorite literature from America, uh, partially because he wow. thought the kids were like little monsters. Um, but it's just amazing how four panels a day for 50 years can speak volumes to people. Like, that's the kind of access that, you know, with the dwindling of comics in newspapers, it's hard to have anymore. Yeah. So it's amazing yeah. that kind of reach that Schultz had. Well, and I think that was one of the things that Bill Watterson was always complaining about and harping on. And one of the reasons mm -hmm. he got out of the industry is because he kept having to, to cram more and more into smaller and smaller spaces. And it was one of the huge victories for him when he finally on, on, got his Sunday comics where he could just do whatever he wanted with whatever space he wanted. And that was a, yeah. people don't appreciate how huge victory that was because he did it in the mid nineties when like comic, like newspaper comics had already ceased to be like a big important thing. He was like, I think of Bill Watterson as like the last great American cartoonist that had any major influence. I mean, he's not the last guy to make something that was good, but like his, right. his stuff holds up and it, he was creating like, insanely good comics at an era when no one there was no need to do that all That's people wanted yeah, is like a punchline and three pictures spread and everyone saw it mm -hmm. yeah okay well i don't want to keep you guys too long if i have uh no man that was a great call yeah so I, i'm looking for <laughs> it, it, it to, was to bart uh bart kira sounds awesome yeah Absolutely. it sounds like it'd be right yeah. up your alley yeah, I think there actually there's still some incomplete pages. <laughs> That's so a good point. Oh you, yeah, if you want to if you want to join Bart Kira, there's there's still time. I mean, some people. Well, I can only I can only draw frog people. So. Okay. Oh okay. Well, you know that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, man. Thank you so much for calling right. in. No problem. All Thanks, right. man. See you, man. Bye. That was Daniel. He has a radio show actually out on uh, KTXT. Tuesdays from ten to twelve. I know you guys are new fathers, so you probably don't get to stay up that late. <laughs> Or, yeah, we, we stay up late and we just put the baby back down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's actually not actually. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. We'll just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was a good start. I like, the, I like what you guys have come up with. Got, we've got frog people. We've got excellent frog people. Let's so, check. actually, mine is a, uh, uh, it, it, mine's a, a, frog, a frog farmer who's holding a 1995 cell phone. <laughs> oh. That's completely it's awesome. He's a person because he's wearing a necktie. <laughs> and only people wear neckties. Yeah, as evidenced. <laughs> he's got a proper job. So. Like me here. <laughs> Mine's a little bit more, uh, I, I was drawn from my Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld kind of side of my brain. But this is a frog who's basically just scarred up from battle and he's holding a gun. Uh, I'll tell you it's an homage to the famous Time Magazine cover, but uh, it's actually just because I didn't want to bother to draw in perspective on this one. So That's it's just good. the gun straight on. But, well, perspective something I will provide. There you go. That's why we're here. <laughs> now, I have a technique question because I noticed you both got started straight away and drew drew them basically complete. There's no sketchings at all. I know we have markers, but uh, is that the way you usually work? Uh, freehand, or do you usually plan out, sketch, erase, uh, develop so, as you go? Yeah, uh, definitely sketch first. Um, usually you don't start off just inking stuff. Uh, right. But what uh, and you know everyone varies i usually start off with a blue uh either uh, have blue graphite and if, if i'm working on paper i'll do blue graphite and then ink on top of that later with using either a brush or like a crow quill pen or something but um or i've been doing a lot of digital work now so that makes that kind of changes the whole process because then you don't need to put down sketches necessarily because you can just basically ink from start to finish um still don't recommend that <laughs> you still start off with something extremely rough and right. you you fine-tune it 
So, do you envision yourself ever making a complete switch to digital uh, for publications, or uh, would you still draw some comics uh, by hand, scan them, and then post them online? So we talked about that at dinner tonight, actually. That yeah, was, uh, before question. we came here, we were actually just talking about whether or not we want to make the full transition over, and I don't think so. I don't think I'll ever completely abandon working on paper because. It's, a, it's, it's just got a whole different feel to it. I mean, um, there's a variety of different types of paper, different types of inks and pens and, and, and brushes and things, and you never kind of really, you don't want to lose, you know, that feeling of, of being able to, to influence the line width by depending on how, you know, how you move your wrist on the paper. It's just, it's an art form to it, and it's, yeah. it's yeah. art. Right? Do, you see a, do you see a decline in... Uh, in uh, drawn by hand comics, uh, especially with ones posted online, do you see a Absolutely. trend there? Absolutely, yeah. Most people are doing things uh, digitally now. I, I say most. I, you see more and more people doing digital, right. straight to digital. Um, I mean, you can you can draw on your iPad. I mean, it's that simple. So, and if if you have uh, any sort of uh, touch screen device, you can create content. And we don't want to discourage that. We we want people to create content no matter what their media is. So, I think. Tangentially, or maybe along with that, you do see a little bit of a rise in printed comics, though. Uh, there's a small press scene, like uh, in Houston, we'll have Zine Fest mm. in October, and uh, there's something. Shout out to Zine Fest, they'll be on the show soon. Oh, uh, nice. Well, they'll be on the show when it's Zine Fest time, <laughs> and I have talked about that. Oh, cool. That's awesome. We're yeah. definitely hoping to be there ourselves. Uh, but th there's something about having a handmade, hand bound object that's really appealing, or a book with high production values. And, you know, kind of like how the music market saw a decline in CD sales to digital, but also to LPs, because people just wanted a good record. They could touch, they could handle liner artwork, they could uh, they could put it in a you know needle and groove setup and really listen to it. So I think there's a even if the way it's made transitions to more of a digital thing, I think you'll always find a really fond love for printed copies, um, no matter what. I think that'll persist. Yeah, in the same way as you said. Uh, there are the people who prefer vinyl records, right? Right. Or um, cassettes to actually downloading things. It's it's going to be the same way. Um, even the, the web comics. Uh, 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 the other aspect too is is financial, right? And supporting local artists because a lot of the people who put stuff online um, are doing it at uh, extremely cost effective for a reason because right. it's expensive to put things into print and so um, by fueling the cost through something like Kickstarter or th um, just donating through PayPal directly. Mm -hmm. no, then we know a lot about Kickstarter around here. Yeah, so um, it's <laughs> Not a lot to talk about that one. <laughs> uh, Patreon is this new one that's rising up where you basically donate depending on what content is released. Yeah. So the more um, uh, while it's nice to appreciate things online for free, I think there's still something about supporting artists and buying their book that you know kind of help fuel the process to keep going. Well, yeah. at a very basic level, if you don't if you don't buy their products, if you if you if you if you can't if you can't give them a way to sustain their livelihood, doing what they do, they're not going to be able to keep doing it. Sure. Exactly. Um, to the level that they would appreciate, because you can only do it part time for so long. Eventually, at some point, you got to say. I don't know. I guess this is my life now, and then just throw yourself into it, mm -hmm. which is a choice I think we will eventually have to make. Whether this show becomes 100% of our lives, or we just go back to whatever it was we were doing before. Just go all in. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is all great, but we got to move on. We have. Oh dear. We're we just ha about... we're happily coloring away here. So if let's you act out a story. So one thing before we before we send these guys out to the world as, as in the story that Ryan and I will enact I think one of the key things these guys need is a name so Sibo give me two names off the top of your head one starting with the letter B and the other starting with the letter X Bill Bill and no since Vince isn't here his middle name is Xavier. All right, Bill and Xavier. Okay, we'll we'll leave that for me and Ryan to figure out who is whom, who is whom, whom is whom is who. who? Oh, I saw this in an episode of The Office. It's whom when it's the object of the sentence, yeah. and it's who when it's the subject of the sentence. I no, think. it's not. Yeah, yeah, it is. Is it the it other is, way around? I don't know. I'm just exactly going against you. Look, the German major had to learn this in English <laughs> so he could learn it in German. It is definitely what he said. <laughs> I was an English major, which is why I don't know mathematicians. <laughs> hey, you know, speaking of Germany, shouldn't we kind of chime in? Hell yeah! Uh, Germany winning? Hell Woo! yeah. Deutschland is Sieger, Weltmeister, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I want 20 bucks. <laughs> Very nice. That was the most I'd ever bet. Okay. So let's hopefully not create a huge mess. So who's whom? Who is, which one is which? We've got, let's, let's say this guy is Xavier. I was going to say the same thing. This guy's an Xavier. It tickles me that there would be a farmer named Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> farmer. He is a far, he is, it's already established that he's a farmer. We can't change that. No. Well, yeah. Or he could just be, you know, you pretending can't. to be a farmer. Wait. Okay. In a very yeah. hipster sort of way. <laughs> Maybe he's very, very uh, cheap. And he doesn't actually gardening. know what a farmer looks like. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, farmers have 90s right. cell phones. And, <laughs> and not, neck to, not to rush you, Ben, but uh, we got we to, gotta, you know, time. By all means, he's ready to go. All right, Bill is ready to go. Ryan, if you, if we could get a song from Sibo while Ryan and I adjourn to the performing area. Ah, uh, yes. Thank yeah, you, sir. By all means. I love it. Thanks. Thanks, man. Just do it here? I, we should do it over here because I can't reach my microphone over here. Oh, yeah. Control Already first. established. Awesome. <laughs> we didn't think this through, as we never do. <laughs> well, we're just, you know, waiting on the world to change. No. Hell yeah. All right. This is actually good because I can't see. All right. This is like a crappy improv thing, except this is like the worst improv ever. <laughs> we're not even doing it. Hi. I'm... Xavier the Frog! Hi ho, I'm Bill! <laughs> I, so you added syllables to let's Bill. Let's get that a scenario impressive. from one of the comic book artists here. Do a what? We can get a starting scenario or something. Yeah, Bill's trying to take out sustainable urban gardening in the city. He's trying to take it out? Yeah, he's trying to stop it. He doesn't like urban gardening. All right. And Xavier is obviously trying to stop Bill with his cell phone. And you said urban gardening? Hey, come on, man. My parents bring are texting me during I the bring show. I'm the show, and I'm like, <laughs> Mom and Dad say they're proud of me. <laughs> okay, Ben's mom and dad, it's cool that you're proud of your son, but this isn't that big of an accomplishment. It's just on public access. Anyway. We don't have public access in my hometown, it's no TV. <sighs> okay, anyway, they're probably watching the internet anyway. Anyone can be on the internet. <laughs> Hey, sorry to interrupt, but uh, real quick, uh, can we move the coffee tables, perhaps? Yeah. Let's. Hey, Sibo, whenever you're on screen. Sustainable urban farming. Welcome to Frog Town Theater. Starring Xavier, the business farm frog, and, and Bill, the cyborg warrior who's against everything that Xavier stands for. I stand for sustainable urban agriculture. And I stand against you. We're at an end. We're at odds then. You there, with your hip cell phone and totally hip hat. Oh, you like the cell phone? I got it in a thrift store. It's fantastic, but not at all befitting of a farmer. I'm a new, hip, urban farmer. We have sustainable agriculture in the city. And that's exactly everything I'm against. <laughs> Why are our voices so weird? No, your voice is normal. Mine's the one that's weird. Ribbit. Ribbit. Put that in that cell phone and listen to me. No, I have to hear. Uh, I'm calling my mom because she's called me because she wasn't aware I was in the middle of something very important. Well, I'm sorry, his parents. Tell it's your okay. mother to go away. My dad has a 90 cell phone. It's... Yeah, it's true. Okay. <laughs> it's not the issue with urban farming that I'm against. I'm against your totally hip style. It's not the hitting of an urban farmer. So you're jealous of my urban hip styles? That's exactly it. I wish I could be more like you. More like me? Yes, more like you. I only have this cyborg guy and this other normal frog guy. Then why you be beefing, son? Because how do you dress so well? 
I'm a sustainable urban farmer. We have to have a fine sartorial sense. Plus, I'm a frog who's wearing a tie. How weird is that? It's actually not that weird since you're also talking on a cell phone. That is true. I have an un an uncanny ability with technology. A little, I like your, your cybernetic arm. Oh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I do what I can with Though it. Though as a farmer, I am opposed okay, to cybernetic. A bit. What? Can you back up a little bit, please? This is taking us out of the thank story. You. Yeah, seriously, Ed. Well, anyway, Xavier, can you tell me, do you shear your own sheep to get the wool to, to uh, sew up your own shirt, or did you buy it at a store? Quick conceptual question, Bill. Yes. I know that as an urban farmer I should know this, but are my sheep also frogs, or are they real sheep that uh, I'm a giant frog that shaves them? Are we giant? Have you noticed? <laughs> we are particularly giant, that is true. So are the sheep frogs, or are the frogs... Well, have you ever seen a frog with sheep wool? I haven't, which is odd because I'm a sheep farmer in the city, which also doesn't make any sense. Well, you it's it sort of works like my understanding of it is it sort of works like a cat scratching post, you know, in your apartment. It's vertical the way the sheep are held in your apartment. There's not a lot of horizontal space for the sheep to dwell, so you stack them up toward the ceiling. Or at least that's what I thought happened. I could be wrong. I'm not an urban farmer like yourself. Well, I've only just started out in urban farming. Our first sheep don't come in until next week. I'm mostly just tilling the soil and talking on my cell phone and calling the police! Wait, no! I thought we were friends now! No! Ha! You fell prey to the, to the most basic trick of every urban farmer ever. What, what do -do -do -do. trick is that? I said, what trick is that? That we're actually calling the police on our phones all the time. Your mother is a cop? Hell, uh, yes, she is. She is frog cop. Mom. Mom frog cop. She sounds like a strong, powerful woman, and I'd like to meet her. And I guess I will once she comes to arrest me. Yeah, and throws you in frog jail, which is worse than human jail. Although you'll probably break out with your cybernetic arm. I've never been to human jail. Only frog jail. Frog and jail. I must say... It really roughed me up, something fierce. Is that where you got your cybernetic arm? Your cybernetic frog arm? No, no, I bought that off eBay. <laughs> you, you mean frog bay? No, I mean eBay. There's no different bays, there's just the one for auctions. Okay. <laughs> The end. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you, yes, thank you to so these much. fine gentlemen for the beautiful artwork, which... Yeah, seriously, this is, I don't know if you guys this reads that well, but these are, like, they did this sort of offhand. And if anyone does want these, we'll get them to sign them and, uh... Shh! I'm glad that nobody's called in to ask for them because I really think this should be a permanent fixture yeah, here you know in what? the studio. Yeah, you don't get to have one. All of our callers and fans, these are ours forever. Quick, write Property of Space City Chronicles on the back. Grab a marker. Yep. And then you gentlemen need to sign your pieces. Absolutely. Well, of course we'll you need to. Here, we'll sign. bring it on in. And this also... Is, you know, me writing on top of it is great, great TV. Anyway, <laughs> we'll do that late. We'll do that after the show. No one wants to see that. They don't? They don't want to see an autograph session? No, they don't. Oh, okay, well, let's sit back down then. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to sit down and reorganize as best we can. As usual, the better the show, the bigger the mess. For ourselves. Hooray! All right, we're good. I should probably make an amendment for the record. My wife doesn't it's work as a mathematician. Stop. She just was trained as a math person, so she brings a level of mental excellence to everything she well, does. Well, the corrections department will forgive us then. Yeah, I just, I, don't know. I didn't want to lie on TV. When she gets a little too philosophical, do you tell her that she's putting Descartes before the horse? <laughs> <laughs> I will now. I've been waiting about 40 minutes to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Blurted that out. Anyway, uh, That's great. we've got like five minutes left, and one of the things I realized I didn't do at all is to say where people, where and how people can find your work. We've talked about you guys are on the web. Um, Chris, your website is uh, bullioncomics.com. Is that correct? If we could get that, yeah, it's correct. it's on the screen right there. Yeah, Bullion Comics. You can find pretty much everything that I scribble down on paper up there. Yeah. Um, and Ben, you are at, you have uh, your last name, which you'll have to spell out. 
Yeah, well, I actually, I use, a, I use a handle called Hippogram for my social media. Good. So That's a lot easier. It's a, yeah, <laughs> That's why I did it, because you can't Hippogram, spell human. Yeah, well, my last name is also unspellable, but <laughs> the world will never know my last name. They will only know R -A -S -S -E -N -F -O -S -S. me as Wedding Cup Champion. R-A-S-S-E-N-F-O-S-S. -S -S. No. Nice. That's not, not what it is. That's oh. a lie. It is Wedding Cup Champion John. Oh, when did you get it changed? Uh, when I won the cup. Oh, wow. That's that that should the court been right been after this. Yeah, I, I went down to City Hall. We're right down the street. Anyway, uh, yeah, anyway, you have a Tumblr. You guys post stuff regularly on various places. Yes. But the best place to check you guys out, uh, your the things we just saw. You guys are also on Twitter. Mm -hmm. yep. You're at. I got a Tumblr too. And yeah. And if you're lucky enough to be our Facebook friend, that's sincere interaction. You're lucky enough. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, we're not lucky enough. Very exclusive. And that's fine. <laughs> you can't just be Facebook friends with just anybody. No. No. Uh, what would the world become? <clears throat> yeah. Cool. 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 Oh. Cool. Uh, what else? Let's see. We got a huge mess here. Oh yeah. So Sibo was talking about this earlier, and I think we should address this. Let me get my phone. You should. Uh, it was a the, brilliant <laughs> moment. The country of my, like the country of my ancestry, the. Uh, country formerly known as West Germany, the Federal Republic of Germany now, the Unified Germany, has won the greatest trophy in all of sport, barring, of course, the Wedding Cup, which I will continue to bring every week until someone challenges me for it. It still hurts. It's brewing. It still hurts. Yes. And it's all only appropriate that I get to have Ryan, it. Ryan, you, would you think that the refereeing in finger soccer was fair? I'd say it was more than fair. I'd say it was uber fair. It was uber oh. fair. So it didn't resemble anything like the World Cup at all? Pardon? It didn't resemble the World Cup at all. I, I, having not watched the World Cup at all, I'd say it disagree with it me. to a T. <laughs> just disagree with him. Just let him go and it's disagree. Okay. With I just okay. Anyway, I, I think it was fairly legitimate because I scored, I did score three reverse goals to get the score back to where it was favorable to me, and then somehow and I was he, declared the winner. He was the champion of multiple ball. Yeah. Multi ball soccer. Anyway, I got really excited last night. And I got so excited that this morning I felt really bad. Very, very bad. Your mood took a, a swing for the worst. Yeah, so I can't get excited for another two weeks. Maybe more more like a month. I did not see that coming. No more exciting excitement for John. Mm. Now I myself get a little uncomfortable whenever there's a surge in German nationalism. Maybe that's just <laughs> That's not a funny joke. <laughs> that was funny. No, it's not funny. <laughs> it's not all right with me. Oh, that's it's uh, all right. That, no, that's not okay. <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> oh that's crap! We never know how to end these stupid things. Uh, let's just see how. Like, you guys want to just like see how wide you can spread your legs out? No. <laughs> you win. Yeah. Hey, I have that was idea. that was a challenge. What's I had to shoot a challenge, and if you had won, you would have won the wedding cup. If I could, uh, if I could plug that for a second. Oh yeah, plug. One more plugs. One more plug. One more plug. Uh, this this is cool. This was the first big comics project I did. It's called Making It. It's actually uh, it's a faith based graphic novel we use in juvenile prisons here in Houston. Oh okay. Uh, it's based on an eleven step program that helps kids get from incarceration to restitution and being involved in the community again. So, uh, Kirk Blacker was the guy who wrote it, but uh, great comics project. Uh, it, it, you know, I had to learn perspective drawing to actually do it, so it was a lot of fun. But uh, making it, it's it's probably one of my proudest works. So, that's out there online. Comic Amazon. book, graphic novels for social and for social justice, social improvement. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. anyone can get behind that. I think we all. I think anyone who's like, uh, comic books are dumb. We've got. This is. I think it's Proof actually to the contrary. To close this, I think comics are like the best thing in the world because they can appeal to everyone because even if you're illiterate you can still appreciate them mm -hmm. and I think there's a whole new level of literacy that has to go into reading a comic book you have to have visual and spatial reasoning and I think it's a beautiful thing and I want to thank you guys so much for being here thank you for having us absolutely a ton of fun thank you uh, we might have you back on later if we need more graphic -y stuff all right I don't know great. But we'll do if we need you we'll do another uh, sketch live yeah, sketch yeah, yeah 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 I want to thank all our callers and I want to thank Sibo for playing us doing a great ass job uh, I want to thank my mouth for issue for for talking so much I want to thank my bald head I want like I want everyone to know that I'm bald in tribute for of spider Jerusalem <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep talking and talking and talking. Uh, let's let's close on like trying to talk over each other. So one, two, three, go. I am more important than loud all noises. Loud noises. Loud noises. Loud noises. Loud noises. Quiet. Uh,